Good morning Year 4 and welcome to Thursday's Literacy Lesson. This lesson is going to be for the children who have got the Year 3 booklet. So if this is your booklet, then I'd like you to turn to page 28 please. And you're going to come across the page that looks just like this. So, before we start with our learning today, I want us to just have a look on the board. And the word that I've got written behind me says synonym. Okay, so I want us to try and say that because it's quite a tongue twister. So I want us to try and say it. So we say synonym, synonym. Okay, and a synonym is a word which has the same or a similar meaning to another word. So I've got two examples on the board for us to have a look at. So the word that I've got here, discover. Okay, and a synonym for discover, a word which has a similar meaning to discover, is find. So a synonym for discover would be find. And you can also swap them around. So a synonym for find would also be discover. They are words which have similar meanings. So let's have a look at my second example that I've got on the board. So I've got here, frightening. Okay, frightening. And I want you to read now what is the word, what is the synonym that I have chosen that is very similar to frightening. Can you read that? Okay, so that's scary. Okay, so scary means the same as frightening. So they mean the same as well. Now, on this third one, I haven't given you an example for this because this is uh, what I want you to have a look at at home. So the word that I have got is strong. Okay, and you might be able to think of a synonym already in your head. But what I would like you to do, even if you've got a synonym in your head, is I want you to use a really useful tool that can help you find lots of synonyms for words. So I'm going to show you how you can access that at home. So the word that I am looking for, that I've given you, is strong. Okay, so what you need to do is on your device that you are using, it may be a laptop, phone, iPad, you're going to go into Google and you're going to put in online thesaurus. Now a thesaurus is a little bit like a dictionary. So a dictionary, you, you would find the definition for the word. Now a thesaurus is where you find synonyms for words and you can use a book thesaurus or an online thesaurus. And when you come onto this sort of web page, this is thesaurus.com. Now the reason that I've chosen this one is the one that I would recommend is because it has on here the synonym of the day and it's a little quiz that you can do at home. So it says, do you know which one is a synonym for display? And you've got three possible answers on there. You can click on the one that you think is right, is the right synonym for display and it will provide you with the answer for that. So that's something really good that this website offers. Um, so when you come on to looking for a synonym for strong, you're going to type it up into the search bar here and then you've got your magnifying glass that you press and that will search all of the synonyms for you. So this is a really good tool for when you are writing so you can get better words. Remember when we say to use ambitious vocabulary, that's normally in your success criteria. So when we say that, that's using better words. So instead of using strong I'd like you to think of another synonym for that. And all of the three words that we've looked at today are all taken out of your text, okay? So that's something that I want us to look at first. And now I want us to just quickly have a look at the learning question before I move on to the next slide. So today's learning question is, can I retrieve information from an article? Now I'm gonna use my highlighter here. And I'm going to highlight, retrieve, and I'm going to highlight article. Because those are two key words, I think, in our learning question today. When we talk about retrieving information, which reading dog am I going to be thinking of? We have lots of reading dogs and they have very different skills. And if we are retrieving, which reading dog will I be thinking about? And his name does begin with R. 
can you tell the person who's next to you or even say it out loud if you are by yourself it should be retriever rex and he is the reading dog which would have the skill of retrieving in there so when we are retrieving information the answers are all in your text so you're going to pull out the answers from the text today and then I want to come on to the second half of my learning question because it says I want to retrieve information so I want to take it out of the text I'm looking at but the particular text that we are looking at today is called an article so I want to, you to just have a little look at the layout of the extract that we are looking at today and have a look at some things that some things in there that might look a little bit different from yesterday's because yesterday we were looking at a novel weren't we and today we're going to be looking at an article so you can pause the video now if you would like and then I'm going to come on to the next page which will explain what an article is okay so hopefully you have had a look in your uh, books and you can see that it, it does look very different it's not laid out the same as a novel so here you can see that an article is a piece of writing on a particular subject that might be in a newspaper magazine or online now that is a lot of information that i've just given you there so let's pick that apart a little bit so an article it's a piece of writing so it's an extract of writing however it's on a particular subject so it's only going to be talking about one thing so it's going to have one topic that it's going to be talking about not more than one so it's talking about a particular subject and you might see them in a newspaper in a magazine or quite often now you will see articles online as well so you can see I've put some pictures on here so if you're on a laptop it could be the news that you are looking at today and it might have a picture or a caption on there and some information and here we can see it's a newspaper article and the way that they are written is in columns so they they are written in columns they don't go right to the end of the page so let's have a look at how this extract is laid out so when I'm holding this up now you can see that these here are paragraphs so you've got a paragraph a paragraph and the writing stops because it's written in one column and then you've got your second column here this part at the beginning of the text is it looks very different and it's in bigger and bolder writing and this is what we call the heading so it's the title of your text and it's telling the reader a little bit about it now before we move on i just want to talk about the introduction and i'm going to put a picture on the board for you to have a look at whilst i read the introduction for our work today okay so i'm going to move out the way so you can see this and this is your introduction jellyfish have bell-shaped bodies and long tentacles or arms many jellyfish are harmless to humans but some can sting jellyfish stings can cause serious pain and an illness this article about barrel jellyfish are harmless jellyfish which is found in the seas of britain so you can see from this picture here that jellyfish have got very long tentacles and the tentacles if they brush past you they can sting you okay but today we are going to be talking about barrel jellyfish and barrel jellyfish are a type of jellyfish a species of jellyfish and they are harmless now it has said that they have been found in the seas around britain so you can see at the bottom here that you've got your glossary so in your glossary you've got two words you've got plankton now plankton are tiny creatures that float in the sea quite often they are food for other animals so when we are reading through it today when it comes across the word plankton you know that that is just the small very very small um creatures that live in the sea and then you've got nudie branch nudie branch is a type of sea slug so when you come across that word you know that that is a sea slug so what we're going to do now you're going to read 
through your work, your extract today and then I'm going to come across to some ways of answering the questions which are on the other side of your book. So you can pause the video now, you're going to read through the article, remember if there are any tricky words you can chunk them together, okay, so you can break it apart, so if we were thinking about um, the word thick, we would have thick, thick, and blend that together. You know how to use that skill at home. When you are ready to move on to your questions, I want you to then play the video back and we are going to work through an example question and some similar questions that are in your work for today. Okay, so hopefully you have read the article. It's a very interesting article to read. Um, I know for sure that if I saw a jellyfish on a British coastline, if I was uh, in the coast, if I was at Wales or Blackpool, even though I know that they might not be harm harmful, I would still be quite scared. So we're going to move on to an example question that I've got on the board for us today. This is not one that's in your book, but I'm going to show you the skill that I'm going to use to answer it. So, my question today is, why have jellyfish been attracted to Britain's coastlines? And that's a question that I've made up myself, but I have put on the board here, I've taken part of the article that we have been looking at today, and it's the very first paragraph. So, here is my paragraph, and I'm going to retrieve and take the information from the text. So, Scores of large jellyfish have been discovered on Britain's coastline after they have been attracted to warmer conditions brought on by a recent mini heat wave. Now, I'm going to highlight this here. Why have they been attracted? And I can also see in the text, I've got the same word, attracted. So hopefully, when I read it back now, it's going to give me uh, the answer of why the jellyfish have been attracted to Britain's coastline. So when we say attracted, it means they've been drawn in and they've wanted to come and visit our coastline. So why have they wanted to come and visit? They have been attracted to warmer conditions brought on by a recent mini heat wave. So jellyfish, we don't normally see them around Britain because our conditions are quite cold. We have very rainy, cold weather, and that's not the sort of conditions that jellyfish would live in. Now, because we have had a recent mini heat wave, it has attracted the jellyfish because we have now got warmer conditions. So you can see that the answers were in the text, and now I'm going to answer it in a full sentence. Okay, so I've got my question, why have jellyfish been attracted to Britain's coastlines? Now, when you are answering your questions, try not to think about it too much and just use the question as part of your starting point for your answer. So, I'm going to get my pen and I'm going to use part of the question. So, jellyfish... Attracted. Now all of these words I'm going to spell correctly because they are in the question above. So, so far I've got jellyfish have been attracted to Britain's coastlines because they have had warmer weather because warmer conditions means warmer weather so they have had warmer weather and when we say they we are talking about the people who live in Britain 
And that is a full sentence. That is what I'm going to be looking for in your answers today when you've got retrieval questions. I've used half of my sentence I've used from the question and then I've just got my conjunction in the middle and then explained my answer afterwards. Okay, so let's have a look at another one that we've got. Now this one is from your text. Now this is question five and I've put this one on the board on purpose because I want to talk through what each of these mean. I'm not going to give you the answer for it, but I am going to tell you the meaning of each of these types of text. So, in your books it says, which adjective best describes this text? Circle one. Now, you can only circle one of these. Don't circle two, because it's actually to circle one. Now, I have put best in red writing, and I want you to notice that it's asking for the best suited response. So, you might think, oh, well, it has got a little bit of this in, but I'm not sure, so I'm going to choose either one. It's the one that is most like. So when we talk about different types of text, you've got these four. So we've got a factual text. A factual text gives you lots of facts which are true, facts which are true about the subject. So you've got to think, is, it, uh, is the article based around facts of jellyfish? Is it persuasive? So when we talk about a persuasive text, is it trying to get the reader to do something? Is it trying to get the reader to do something with jellyfish? Okay, is it persuading them? Is it fictional? Is it not real? Is it a story that's made up perhaps about jellyfish? And finally, is it exciting? Is it an exciting piece of writing about jellyfish? So you've got to think about it. It might have an element of two of these, but which one is best describes the text? And I just want you to circle around one of them. Okay, so for today, I'm going to leave you to your questions now. We've gone through a couple of examples. Now, when you have finished your work for today, you can rewind this video and I want you to have a look at the challenge that I've got on the board. Now, I'm really enjoying these quick responses that I'm getting out and I'm loving giving my shout outs. So I've done a little challenge on the board. I'm going to leave you to it. When you can tell me the answer to this challenge, I want you to send your responses in as quick as you can into my mailbox so I can pick out my winner for today. So, my challenge is, can you unjumble the word? And those are my letters, so I need you to unjumble this word. And if you know what the word says when we have put all our letters in the correct place, then quickly tell anybody who you're living with, I need to tell Miss Chafe the answer, and then just write the word in and press send. Okay, everybody, that is it for today. Um, before we, uh, we stop for today, I want us to just reflect on our learning as well. So you might have learnt quite a lot of new things about jellyfish today. And I'm just going to press on the dice and we're going to have a look at two reflection questions. Okay, so the dice is rolling and it's landed on the number six. And number six says, what has helped you with your learning today? What has helped you with your learning? It could be that you've gone onto the online thesaurus and it's helped you to think of some synonyms. What's helped you with your learning today? I want you to have a think about that. Okay, and then we're going to do one more roll of the dice. Let's see which number we land on. Oh, it's landed on number four. So a really good question here. What did you find tricky? So what are you finding tricky with your learning when you are answering comprehension questions? Is that the tricky part? Is it reading? Is that the tricky part? Reading and being able to chunk and blend your words together. So those are my two questions today. What has helped you with your learning? So is there something that has helped you? Or I want you to think about what you found that might be a little bit tricky. Okay, so I can't wait to see your responses of my challenge of my unjumbled word. And the shout out goes to the person who is the quickest to respond back and send me the email. So good luck, everybody. And I look forward to seeing all of your work.